What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Fusion 360 tutorial for you. In today's video, I'm going to start introducing you to the animation workspace and teaching you how to create different animations inside of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so to start off, this is a model I downloaded off of TurboSquid for free. So you can go download this and follow along if you want to. So this is the UH-60 Blackhawk by Kofin Flumi. And uh, you can definitely download this, follow it, follow along. There were a lot of things I had to fix in order to make this animatable inside of Fusion 360 though. So like for example, I had to come in here and I had to set all of the rotors as a component and setting the central point of that component was a little bit tricky. So you may want to find a simpler model to follow along with, but I think it's going to work pretty well for this tutorial. So if you want to download that, I will link to that in the notes down below. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk through how to start creating animation inside of Fusion 360 using the animation workspace. So up to this point, we've been working inside of the design workspace, which is the workspace that's designed to help us create different models. Um, but you can see how there's no options inside of the design workspace for creating any kind of animation. And what we want to do is we want to create a video file of this, um, of this object where the rotors turn and the helicopter moves. And so if we want to do that, we need to use the animation workspace. So you can find that by clicking in the little workspaces drop down right here, and you're going to go down to the one that says animation. And so you can see how it gives you a little summary of this. Basically, you can create different animations of how something can be operated. So when you first open this up, you're going to notice a few things. The first thing you're going to notice is overall, this looks fairly similar to the design workspace. So you've got your tools up at the top of the page. You've got your browser for the different parts and pieces here. One thing you're gonna notice about this though is the only thing that shows up in your browser is components. So um, your bodies don't show up in here, your individual bodies, which is why I had to take the rotors and I had to put them in their own component because otherwise I wouldn't be able to animate them separately from my overall object here. So, but the things that are in here. So you can see how like these little parts of this component are all in here separately and you can uh, select them separately if you want to. Um, and then at the bottom of the page, you've got your animation timeline. This is where you're going to control the creation of all of your different actions inside of Fusion 360. So your timeline is where you're going to control um, your camera movements and your object movements and everything like that. What we want to do is let's start off and we're going to create a very simple animation. So it's just going to be an animation where the rotors spin up and then the helicopter flies up into the sky. Really what we need to do is we need to animate three things. So we need to animate the rotors starting to spin up, we need to animate the rotors spinning at a constant speed, and then we need to animate the movement of the helicopter up. And so what we want to do to do this is we want to use a transform components animation. What this does is this allows us to select a component and it allows us to dictate a movement of that component inside of our model. So what we want to do is we want to click on this and you can see how this pops up a window very similar to the move tool in the design workspace. And what we're going to do in this situation is for our rotor, we're going to set a rotation for our rotor. So if I was to click and drag this to 180 degrees and then click OK, the first thing you're going to notice is that nothing really happens. So the reason nothing really happens is because we haven't dictated a time or a playhead for where we want this, this um, movement to go. So basically we've told it to create a movement, but we haven't told it how long we want that movement to be. And so what I want to do is I want to take this playhead, I want to drag it over to four seconds. So I'm going to move my mouse to right here. And then we're going to go back and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to select transform components and we're going to set our Z angle to 360 degrees and hit the enter key. Well now what that's going to do, you can see down here is that's going to add a little clip for the rotors rotating. So now if I click and drag this little object right here, you can see how the ro rotors now rotate. So if I was to drag this back down to zero, I could click on the bot button at the bottom of the page for playback timeline, and this will play that animation. So now we have a clip in here or a movement in here that's being animated over time. And so you can right click on these and you can edit them. So I could change the duration 
of this animation if I wanted to by typing in a new value. I could also right click on this and I could edit my action. So if I want to edit this, like let's say I didn't want this to be 360 degrees, let's say I wanted it to be something else, I could come back in here and adjust this action using that tool instead of having to delete this and re-add this back in. There's a couple other options as well. You can edit where this starts and where this ends. You can also select all after or all before. We're not going to worry about those too much for this video. But now what we want to do is we want to create another animation. So in this situation, I'm going to drag this to 12 seconds because that's how long I want my rotors to rotate. And I'm going to add another transform components. So I'm going to click on this. And in this situation, notice that when you click and drag this, you can only click and drag this to 360 degrees and then it resets. Well, in this situation, we want this to spin more than just one time um, in this set amount of time we have in here. So over 12 seconds, I want this to spin 360 degrees, like we'll say eight times. So inside of this cell, I'm going to type in 360 times eight and hit the enter key. And so if we right click on this, and we click on edit action, you can see how we've set this so that in the eight seconds, between four seconds and 12 seconds, so between those two points, this is going to spin 2880 degrees. So it's going to spend eight times in eight seconds. So now if we were to play this, you can see how this is going to start and it's going to go slow. It's going to go 360 degrees in four seconds, but then it's going to speed up because now it's spinning 360 degrees once every second. So you can see how now we have a movement in here for our rotor spinning up and a movement for our rotor spinning in general. So now what we want to do is we want to start another animation at we'll say six seconds for right now. So we're going to drag this. We'll get it close to six seconds. And then we want to add another transform. And this time, instead of selecting the rotor component, we want to select our whole model. So we're just going to go over here, click on our whole model, and then we're going to tell this that we want this to animate our helicopter moving up and obviously this isn't in here to scale but we're going to animate our helicopter moving up 48 inches we're going to click on ok and what that's going to do is that's going to add this movement in here but it's out of place so we want this at six seconds we want our helicopter to start moving so we're going to click on this and we're going to edit our start end and we're going to set our start at six seconds we're going to set our end we're going to set our end at 12. We're going to try that again. We're going to edit our start. Just type in 6 and hit enter. Now at 6 seconds, this will start this movement or this upward movement of our helicopter. So if we click on play, you can see how this is going to spin up for 4 seconds and then it's going to go faster while at the same time while this is rotating our helicopter is going to start moving so you can see how this starts moving upward inside of our animation so you can see how you can use this in order to animate those different movements and one other thing you can do if you want to is you can also set a camera transition so for example let's say as this spins up i want my camera to fly down well what i can do is i can set my playhead to the point where we want our camera to be at a different location and we can actually rotate down like this in order to set a camera point. Well now what this is going to do is your camera is going to transition from your starting camera location to that camera location we set at four seconds. So now you can set this camera in order to rotate around to the back side of this helicopter. And you can do this as many times as you want to. So let's say we wanted another camera rotation right here or another camera point. You can see how I could set my camera for this one to rotate to a new camera location. And what this is going to do is this is going to um, animate the camera transition between those different camera locations. So you can see how you can use this to not only create movements, but also camera movements. Now let's go ahead and let's publish this to an actual video file. Because we have our file in here, we've got our animation created pretty well for what we want. And now we want to publish this. And one thing I would recommend is I would recommend clicking on the save button before you do this and clicking OK, just to make sure everything that you have in here gets saved in case something goes wrong. But now we can click on this button for publish video.
It's going to ask us which storyboard we want. We didn't really talk about storyboards too much. Um, in this case, we just want storyboard one anyway, but we only have one in here, so we can leave this on all storyboards. But you can come in here and you can customize your video resolution and other things about your video, and then click on OK. And so what this is going to ask us to do is this is going to ask us to save this as a certain video file. And in this case, these get exported as an AVI. And it's gonna ask if we want to save to a project in the cloud. And I'm gonna uncheck that. And instead, I'm gonna tell this to save to my computer. So you can click on this button right here to tell it where to save this. And then we're gonna click on the button for save. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna take this video, it's going to export it and stitch it together into a video file, and it's going to publish that to the folder that you selected. So we're gonna let this work for a second, and then we'll come back and take a look at what it creates. One thing I wish this did is I wish this opened that folder on your computer, but it doesn't seem to do that. So we're just gonna open up the file. It exported it to this file. So we're gonna go ahead and double click on that, and then you can see that this is the animation that we created. So this is an actual AVI file of our animation. So you can see how this actually looks really good from a smoothness of all the frames and everything else. So it's actually a really good animation um, for not having to do a whole lot of work. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how to start creating animations inside of Fusion 360. I am planning on doing additional videos on different kinds of animations you can create in the future. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you created an animations before. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.